<laughs> okay, hello everyone and welcome to our live at lunchtime. I'm here with Buddy and Plato. He's over there drinking some water, but I'm sure he'll make an appearance. I'm going to try to talk nice and loud today because we are without our microphones. Um, technical difficulties, but we are going to get that fixed as soon as possible, so no worries there. So hopefully you all can hear us. We're going to talk nice and loud. And if you can't, please say something and we will address it. Yeah. We're going to take a pause, though, real quickly, just so more people can join in. All right. Hi, Bubba. Yeah. Isn't he a sweetheart? <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> on a day like today. That's right. Plato loves to suck on his tongue. <laughs> We're not sure if, if, it, if it keeps him more hydrated. Is that a technique or something? You know, I don't know. We're going to have to try it and see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> right? What do you think, buddy? Buddy's going to go check out our, our stand. Yeah, check we've got our equipment over there in the corner. We're watching it. So these are two beautiful bay geldings. Very handsome boys indeed. Very <laughs> curious. Oh yay, we got some more people tuning in. Thanks Wonderful. for joining yes, us for so our glad. live at lunchtime today. So glad you made it. So I will just repeat, we are with Buddy and Plato, two amazing geldings. I absolutely love them. They are fantastic very curious as you can see we might want to move the bag i know we really oh dear oh i'm glad that didn't spook plato yeah very That's good all right I'm gonna see hey, Bob, i'll grab it i'll retrieve it hi plato come up behind Bob. there we go okay and michelle the way that you walk to the side and almost kind of behind plato is a little bit of what we'll be kind of touching on today. That is what are right. What we talking about? I am very excited because this is one of my favorite topics to talk about is horse communication and body language. So there are reasons why this is my favorite topic. One of my favorite topics is because I love being around horses, as you can tell and as you already know. But it's so important to know horse language and understand it because, it, one, it keeps you safe. Two, it keeps them feeling safe and um, confident. <laughs> Plato's coming up right behind Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's important to understand their language so that you know what they want and might be feeling at the time. Now, we talk a lot here at the sanctuary about horses being sentient beings, meaning they can perceive and they have feelings. And um, research has shown that they absolutely are sentient beings. Um, just amazing and wonderful creatures, I'm sure you all. Uh, feel the same, but it's also a known fact that they are able to not only feel and perceive things, but that they also can feel and perceive things from us. So it's even doubly important to mm -hmm. know how to communicate with a horse and how they are know how they are communicating with us, um, so that you know we can have that relationship with them. That's Just hilarious. as in any relationship, it takes time, mm -hmm. it takes trust, and it takes great communication skills. So. I know when I started working here, um, I'll be honest, I didn't grow up with horses. Now, i have been around them before when I was younger and growing up just in certain situations, but I didn't grow up with them. So when I came here, I've learned so much since I started working here. And it was, they didn't know who I was. They didn't recognize my face. So when I approached, it was creating a relationship with all of them. And mm -hmm. I think, I think we... we <laughs> We worked on that relationship a lot here. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's start with the basics. I'm going to talk a little bit, but I also want you all to observe their behavior and their body language and feel free to comment and uh, we'll talk about what we're seeing here. But let me talk a little bit. He smells the treats in my pocket. Oh boy. <laughs> um, these two are very curious. Horses are curious in by nature. That's just part of their personality. Excuse me. Hi. No. Oh, 
Treats are also a good way to build a relationship. <laughs> they are. They are. Um, so when you approach a horse, should you approach them with a chaotic kind of running body? No, I tell the kids this all the time when they come for classes. Mm -hmm. You should approach a horse quietly with respect. Obviously, they're big animals, but they are flight animals. Their natural instinct is to run if something scares them. Um, yeah. But you guys aren't scared, are you? <laughs> now, you'll notice, you might notice with Buddy, if I make a sudden movement on accident, he might get a little startled. He does startle pretty easily. Um, so when you approach a horse, you should have a nice... <laughs> Hi. Quiet body. Quiet Do you want me to body. hold on to some of those trees, get them a little <laughs> off your back a bit? That's all right. I don't mind. A nice, quiet body. And... Um, I'm going to step back a little bit now. It helps that I have treats, but if I did not have treats and I wanted them to approach me or see if they wanted to, I would ask them <laughs> by when they look at me to, I would step away backwards a couple steps. And obviously if they follow, they want to be with you. They're being curious. <laughs> yeah. Lito's very curious. And Buddy wants to be with you guys watching. <laughs> okay. Now, Plato. Now he's sniffing my treats, but when a horse does this and you have no treats in your hand, what do you think he's displaying? Is he is he just trying to smell something or trying to figure things out? He's trying to figure things out. He's trying oh. to figure you out. He's he's being very curious. Right? Are you Mr. Curious? So Plato's just trying to figure out the situation. What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Now I'm I have nicknamed these two as Sir Licky Pants. <laughs> Because they love to, you're okay. They love to lick. There's some flies back here. Now, you notice, Buddy, I told you, he startles easily. So he just startled himself. He kind of splayed out his body a little bit and showed a little bit of fear. He stood up nice and straight and alert. But then, if the trick is, if you are calm, they learn to calm themselves also. Horses are, uh, they like a leader. And if you're calm, they're going to stay calm. But if you were to get afraid with them, they would probably start to run and feel like, oh, goodness, if she's afraid, there must be something to be afraid of, right? So that's just their natural personality, right? Yeah. Okay. Hi, honey. <laughs> You're so cute. You're so cute. So that's the first thing. So like I said, if you want a horse's attention and you want to invite them into your space, you'd sit back a little bit and invite them in. Now, these guys are just going to sit up. There he goes. <laughs> He's like, all right, I'll come into your space. Yeah. So what else can we talk about? Horses do have vocalizations. Um, they whinny to each other. They sometimes can squeal and they greet one another, right? Um, they know each other by their whinnies and they call to each other that way. But how do you think the most effective way to communicate with a horse is? How we can communicate. Mm -hmm. Is it? And how they communicate. Well, when you were talking about as far as approaching a horse, my guess is when it comes to your voice is your inflection. That's definitely part of it. Hmm. But there's something even more important oh, than our okay. voice. What how do we think? How we stand. How we stand. Any guesses out there? All right. Body language. Hmm. We communicate mostly and they communicate mostly through their body language. So let's take a look at these beautiful, handsome boys and let's see what we notice about them what do you notice about plato's eyes in particular eyes can tell you a lot <laughs> <laughs> very curious about that eye there too yeah hi buddy now what he's doing right now is itching on me yeah you're itching and you smell the treats yeah so a horse's eyes if you notice plato's eyes they're nice and soft they call this a soft eye. You don't see the whites of his eyes, the sclera. Um, if you see the whites of their eyes, I mean, sometimes that's normal, especially in, in um, horses that have light colors around their eyes. But usually, if you see a white part of their eye and it's mixed with ears being pinned back to their head, that usually is displaying, I'm scared, I might kick or run, watch out. Now, his ears, if you notice, one ear is up, now they're both up. He saw, he sees my son over there on the sidelines. When both ears are pricked forward and alert and their head is nice and high, that means they are listening or watching something ahead of them. 
So my son moved to the other side of the pasture. He noticed, picked up his head, and was like, oh, it's just a person. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, right? Yeah. Now his ears are back. When they are turned backwards, it does not necessarily mean that they are angry. He's listening to everything around them. They have 10 muscles in their ears as opposed to our three. Oh, wow. They are constantly moving their ears around so that they are keeping themselves safe. Essentially, that's what they're doing, right? They're watching for predators. They're listening for any dangers that might be out there. They are constantly moving their ears. So he's listening to things back here. He's listening to me. He's listening to Alex. Mm -hmm. He's listening to the bugs that are chirping, <laughs> everything. Um, they are very aware of their surroundings. Now, if a horse was angry, it would be displayed, they usually display more than one certain behavior or characteristic, right? But the telltale characteristic, can I use you as an example? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> is when their ears are pinned back straight to their head and they might show their teeth a little and they might display the whites of the eyes, like I said. That would mean they're angry. But right now, he's very calm, very relaxed. How can you tell? Any guesses? What do you think, Alex? I'd say because he's just standing so close to us. He is. He's curious. He's standing close. Yeah. He's wanting attention. <laughs> head being down is a sign of relaxation. So when their head carriage is not held so high, <laughs> I'm buddy, and their head is kind of down and relaxed, they are relaxed and feeling good. Even if they're not eating, if their head is down like that? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Do I taste good? Now, some horses like to lick. Others don't. These guys like to lick a lot because probably I gave them treats beforehand. <laughs> and so they're still tasting the treats, but sometimes they'll lick because they like the salt that's in your hand from sweat. Now, the fact that these guys are eating right now, what does that tell you? What do you think? I would guess that means they feel safe. They feel safe. They feel relaxed. They feel safe enough to put their head down and eat some grass and enjoy. Oh, a good observation from Jane. His ears are moving easily, checking things out. Isn't it so fascinating? Mm -hmm. If you just, if you were to just stand here and watch them and just watch as their ears move like together or one moves and then the other moves a second later, it's so interesting to watch. It's like antennas. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. It really is. Good observation, Jane. Well, absolutely. They are constantly aware of their surroundings. Now, if you had, we talked about the eyes, the softness of the eye. Mm -hmm. We talked about the white of the eye. Now, if, if his eyes were kind of darting around, that would mean he's very alert and he's watching something. He's not sure what's going on at the moment. Whoop, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah. So that's a way to kind of bring them back down. He was spooked by the sudden movement mm -hmm. of your hands. Yep. But then you softens. Yeah, exactly. And you soften too. And it's, yep, exactly. As soon as I so I realized he spooked a little, and I just stayed nice and calm. And then he realized, oh, there's nothing to be scared of. Just a okay. moment. Just a moment. Yeah. You love these streets, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about their eyes. Mm -hmm. We've talked about their ears. Yes, we have. We talked about their head carriage. There's other things we can look at. So there's leg movements. Oh, okay. About. So if, Kristen, if you, well, he, now he's getting close to you, but Ooh, if you want to maybe us. focus in on some of their <laughs> legs. And let's see what we notice as we're watching Plato and Buddy's legs. Ah, I noticed something. Do you notice anything happening? Not necessarily with their legs right now, but with their body. I noticed something. What do you see? I see some twitching. Ah. Now, when horses get really, really scared, sometimes they can tremble and shake. Now, that's not what we just saw. We just saw a little twitch. Sometimes horses can be ticklish. And, but in, during the summer months, when the bugs are out, if they twitch, it's usually because they're trying to get a bug off of them. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, and sometimes, like I said, they can be ticklish in some areas. If you touch them too lightly, they might give a little twitch because they might think you're a bug, <laughs> right? So that's that. That's how they're communicating. Oh, I'm feeling something. I want to get it off me. As you notice, Buddy just turned his head and it looked like he bit himself. He wasn't biting himself. He was itching, trying to get a bug away from him. 
right? Yeah. What do you hear now? Do you notice anything about Buddy's ears? What do you think he could be hearing? I know what he hears. Ah, what is it, Alex? <laughs> you may not be able to hear uh, through your speakers at home or at work or wherever you're watching, but if you've been to the sanctuary before, you've noticed probably that there are train tracks at the back of our property. And so there is a train coming through right now. Now, it doesn't spook the horses, but not you can tell they, they, they know it's there. They yep. hear the difference <laughs> in the noise and they hear it coming through. So that's why their ears start to move. All right, I'll give you some. And they're pretty used to it. As you can see, Buddy is not paying attention to the train at all. <laughs> oh, Jane hears the train. Okay, good. Right. So it does come through. That's perfect. All right, my friends. Are your ears twitching out there too? <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friends. All right, so let's look back oh, down. Oh, something. Ah, that look at the leg. Taught me. So the back leg, the That's way right. it's kind of, oh, well, it was lifted up. It was kind of resting up on what, mm -hmm. almost like almost a toe. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody noticed, but his leg kind of just lifted up and back down mm -hmm. really quick. Let's talk about that a little bit. That's called stomping. Horses can do that when they're in being impatient, when they're bored, or when they're irritated, like trying to get a fly off. <laughs> Which is what Buddy was just doing. And Alex, you mentioned, and I don't know if anybody saw it, but Buddy's leg was cocked back for a little bit. It was kind of like this. Yep. You ever see a horse in their back? It's like this. When the, one of their back legs is cocked and their hips are hanging to one side or a little bit lower <laughs> on one side, it means they're relaxed. Oh, we love resting. to see that here. That's right. Now, combined with, if you have a cocked back leg, and let's say you're walking around our sanctuary one day, mm -hmm. and, or in the barn, and you happen to see a horse that's kind of standing there, he's kind of looking a little droopy, and his ears are a little bit off to the side, right? Like this, and down, and his back leg is cocked, that means they're probably sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go up to them, Try not to startle them by waking them up too abruptly. Make sure you talk to them. Now, here's something else that I think people should know as far as safety is concerned. I don't know if I'll be able to do it because they're licking me, but... Um, Mike, can you hold on a minute? <laughs> so when you um, approach a horse, like I said, calm body, let them smell you, invite them into your space, if they don't want to, don't force it. They might want to be left alone. Now, <laughs> hi. These guys don't want to be left alone. They don't want to be left alone. So when I go, if you noticed earlier when the uh, stand fell over, and Alex mentioned it also, you don't just go behind the horse, right? You could startle them and they could kick because they can't see directly behind them. So you always want to make sure that they know you're there. Talk to them when you walk around. So let's see, can I show? Can I? I know, I have to walk. So I would put my hand on him. I'd walk around, letting him know that I'm here. Hi, buddy. Now, if you were to go behind the horse, please don't do that unless you have experience. <laughs> you can either walk way far away oh, from- Oh dear. What? <laughs> Michelle, did you have notes? <laughs> I, did, I did have notes. Let's not eat that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But now if, we don't want to spook, so the paper fell between them. So we're going to wait for a safe moment to go in right. between because, again, we don't want to spook them. Well, actually, this is a good time to show you. So, mm -hmm. oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if I were to go behind him, what you really want to do is keep your hand on and you walk so close behind their bottom so that if they were to kick out, they wouldn't be able to use so much force. When you go behind a horse, you keep your hand on them, you walk as close as possible, right? Right. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi, Plato. You're so cute, you guys. Yeah. So let's talk about some more things. Yeah. All right. So we talked about the pawing. Let's talk about some other leg movements. Hi. Yeah. We talked about the cocking of the back leg. Um, so they can also paw which means they would take their pipe. <laughs> they would take their foot and kind of drag it along the grass. 
that's usually a, a sign of aggravation. <laughs> Hi. Let's not, no, no, we're not going to tear my pockets off. No. Um, so if you see a horse pawing, they're probably irritated at something or trying to tell you something. So. Yeah, you're silly. You're silly. <laughs> Thankfully, we haven't seen any of that since we've been in here. Mm -hmm. So what should you do? Let's say you are by a horse and they seem very calm, but maybe you start to see something like they're starting to paw. What should someone do if they notice that? Give them their space. Try to notice what they're pawing at. Um, I'll, I'll tell you with my, with my own thoroughbred, if I leave her, if I'm brushing her and taking some time to be with her, she gets upset if I leave. So if I have her on the cross ties and I'm giving her a nice little spa session and I walk away for a second, she is, her eyes are constantly on me. She tilts her head so she can see me and she will paw her foot because she's either saying, hey, come back here or hey, I'd like some more treats, please. <laughs> <laughs> please don't leave me here. Um, so they can get a little impatient at times, just like we do. They have quite the personalities. Each one is different. <laughs> As you can see, you guys are so funny. So it comes down to if um, it's a horse that you own mm -hmm. or you visit frequently, it comes down to knowing the personality of that particular horse. Absolutely. And they're all different. It's very important to know your equine. Um, so you'll notice like, all right, so if, again, if you were here at the sanctuary, um, and you put out your hand and they start, um, you know, they tilt their head towards you and they bring their nose towards you trying to check you out. Don't put your hands right near their mouth unless you know that equine because they might think you have a treat. They cannot see underneath their muzzle is a blind spot. They actually don't see what they're eating. So that's why we have, uh, we tell people not to feed our equines. A lot of them are on, have dietary restrictions, but the other reason is to keep you safe too, because you need to really know your equine. Um, hi. And it's also important to know their personalities mm -hmm. and to always watch their body language, especially when you care for one, because I'm just going to give them some more treats because they're, <laughs> they're not going to stop. Um, hi. Because it's also a good indicator of their health. You want to make sure that you know how your horse's normal personality is so that you can notice any changes in their behavior that, you know, that might be, maybe you need to check something out. Um, let's talk about their tail movements for a minute. Ah, Would yes. you mind uh, focusing on one of their tails? Moving down the body. So you could tell a lot. a little bit. Yeah, you could tell a lot about a, how a horse is feeling by their tail. So their tails are swishing, not rapidly, but they are swishing. The swishing indicates, uh, again, it's summer months. I want to get these bugs away. They're a natural fly swatter. Now, if their tail is switching and there aren't any bugs and it's switching, you know, back and forth pretty quickly, pretty rapidly, they're telling you they're annoyed. They're annoyed by something. Hi. If their tails are held nice and high, they're excited and happy and playful. And a lot of times you'll see a horse is still just hanging down, just kind of chill and relax. Now, if you had a horse and their tail was clamped like kind of really tightly and you couldn't move it. Oh. You just need to move your horse's tail a little bit. If you notice that it was clamped and tight to the body, that's not a, usually a good sign. It can indicate um, pain and you might want to get it checked out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What was that? A bug literally just flew into my Oh no. <laughs> I think it was a butterfly. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Well, I bet they're thinking better you than us. Yeah, exactly. At least you can right? swap them away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we talked about their tails. We talked about their body movements, their twitching. Did you know horses can display emotion? How would you think you would notice if a horse might be feeling sad or depressed? I would guess in the way that in their body language, mm -hmm. I'd imagine if they were feeling like sick or not feeling well or feeling, as you said, like depressed, you probably see it in the way that they're standing. Oh, absolutely. Just like we do. They kind of have an open eye, but they kind of seem like they're kind of dull, oh. almost dull looking. Um, they could be, sometimes they could be seen facing a wall, um, which is kind of sad. Oh. I hope, I hope I never see that, but they can get depressed, especially sometimes when they lose a buddy 
You know, they're very social animals. They get very attached to each other. They, um, you know, they have, they form their own herds. And then, you know, if they lose a friend, they can get very distraught by that. Right. Right. So what's the best way in their body language to tell, like, if you are coming up to them, oh, they're in a good mood. Hmm. They're happy. Maybe they'll welcome my presence if I come by and say hi. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at these guys. <laughs> what do you notice about their demeanor right now? Do you think they're happy? Do you think they're sad? Do you think they're scared? What do you think they're feeling at the moment? Yeah. I'd love to hear some comments of what, what you guys think. Plato keeps doing his, like, head tilt thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What do you guys think? Any comments out there? What do you think these guys are feeling? I can say, if you notice their body language alone, their ears are pricked forward, their head is not held up high, they have um, relaxed body language. Oh, here's something we didn't talk about. Their lips. You can tell a lot by their lips. Hi, and their muzzles. Their muzzles are their <laughs> are their <laughs> are their nostril area, mouth area. All right, here you go. Take that. Oh yeah, Jane is saying they look content. Yes. They look content. Yep, absolutely. That's a very good observation, Jane. But yes, I am interested in learning more. Hello. I don't have any treats. <laughs> Would you like one? Well, I do have some drool on my hand now. <laughs> there you go. So, oh. Jan says, I think they're feeling, how the heck do I get more treats? Exactly. <laughs> yes, I think mm, you're right. Lovely. <laughs> Jan. Yes, Jan, definitely. <laughs> they love their treats, I will say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's talk about their muzzles. So, this is their muzzle. Yeah, this is their muzzle. Now... <laughs> Their muzzles, if you notice, can you let me show them? His bottom lip. We've got a close up right here, maybe. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> if their bottom lip is jiggly and relaxed, or it might be hanging kind of low, that means they are relaxed and uh, happy and feeling, you know, just kind of content. Yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, what? oh, you're okay. You're okay. Oh, it's the wind. Oh. So we saw though, Michelle, you stayed yep. still and calm. Yep. And that was good. That's right. You're okay, guys. You You're okay. Hi. Because our body language is so important, as you've already touched on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, if their lip, if their mouth was super clenched really tight, I bet you can guess what that means because we tend to do the same thing. Ooh, like a clenched jaw? Mm hmm. What do you guys think that means out there? Okay. My guess is stressed. Yeah, they're feeling stressed, annoyed, not happy, right? Scared. Hi. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more treats, guys. You ate us out of house and home. <gasps> They've eaten all the treats? You've eaten everything. Everything. <laughs> so, yeah, we've talked about their muzzles, their ears. Their body language. Let's see. Oh, Plato hears something. What do you hear, Plato? Good observation, Alex. See, Alex noticed. <laughs> he heard something in the distance. Didn't you? Yeah. Hi. Right. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you have ever seen, I'm sure you have if you've been around horses, that <laughs> they like to play. Um, and sometimes it looks like they're fighting when they play. Uh, sometimes they'll nibble at each other. They'll groom each other, <laughs> right? They'll start scratching each other with their mouths. So one will face one way, the other one will face the other way, and they'll just itch each other, right? Yeah. They do like to play, uh, <laughs> run around, roll around. Sometimes they roll because they're feeling happy. Sometimes they roll because they want to scratch some itches they can't reach. Right? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Horses experience all the things that we do. Mm -hmm. what? What? Now, if I were to walk away, now I have no treats, and they follow me, it's because they are showing me they want to be with me and that they're feeling safe. 
You got Plato. one and I got That's one. Right. I was going to say Plato <laughs> went with Alex, but he went with me. Exactly. Horses don't like to be alone. They are constantly looking for someone who can be their leader. In their own herds, they will always establish one horse as a leader. Now, these guys, I have to observe them a little bit more to see who is the, the leader of this group. I don't know. I have a feeling it might be Buddy. It might be Buddy. I don't know. I'd have to observe them a little more. But you can always tell because when you have feeding time, the lead horse will always be the first one to food. And will chase the other one away, just like Buddy just chased Plato away. <laughs> because Buddy wants all the attention at the moment, right? So if you notice, Buddy put his ears back. Not at me, but at Plato. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and horses are always testing you. Like I said, they're looking for you to be a trustworthy leader. Now, they will try to test you and push your boundaries. And you have to show them that, no, I'm the leader. Mm -hmm. You're not going to push me around, right? Like you're pushing me around right now, right? Yeah, you're not gonna get anything. No, no. So they're constantly looking for someone who's going to lead them correctly. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I don't have anything. He is desperately, desperately you guys ate them all. looking what for do more you want? treats. I know. You never get fed, right? I think that's a lie. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> a lie. lie. You that's get so lie. much love. You do. You get lots of love. <laughs> Now, if you notice again, I think Buddy might be the leader here because he just chased Plato away again. I saw that a couple of times. Yeah. Are you he nice? wants your attention he all does. to himself. Yeah. You be nice to Plato. Now, no. I'll come over here and make sure Plato gets some love. Yeah. Now, if you are you oh, looking at me? <laughs> Plato's lip right now is nice and jiggly. His bottom lip is nice and jiggly. Oh. He's relaxed. <laughs> Little droopy lip. Little droopy lip. <laughs> His tail is swishing up the flies. He's going to come say hi to the camera. <laughs> you guys are way too cute. You know that? Yeah. Too cute. Too cute. Now, it's so important to build relationship with any horse, to know their body language, to know how to speak to them, to know what they might be speaking to you. You know, they get times where they feel tired, happy, relaxed, sad, angry, don't feel like doing anything. You just have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. So we hope everyone watching learned something new today. Absolutely. If you come to our sanctuary before or if you're around other horses in your personal lives, maybe you'll take this knowledge and observe something the next time you're here or around another horse. We hope so. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We love questions. And um, if not, that's okay too. But we hope you enjoyed. <laughs>